In this tutorial, I want to talk about calculations of the output field that you're going to get when you pass light through an optical system and at the end you pass it through a polarizer right before you make the power measurement. The first example is one that we're all familiar with and that's the case of crossing two polarizers. So in this case the input state would be any sort of, sort of state with an x and y with x and y components like this ex, ey. So we're going to consider passing this ex, ey state through a set of crossed polarizers. The, so one will be at plus 45 degrees and the second one will be at minus 45 degrees. So first we'll consider what the plus 45 degree polar, polarizer does. So it's going to ask how much 1, 1 is there in the beam, how much plus 45 degrees. I'll make that a unit amplitude vector and I'll put a column vector just like the row vector. Again it's 1, 1. That's a specific case of cosine theta, sine theta when theta is 45 degrees. So this whole thing is the matrix of the plus 45 degree polarizer. And I'll just put a little overbrace on that to emphasize that that's the plus 45 degree polarizer. Then I'm going to hit it with a minus 45 degree polarizer. So that does the opposite. It analyzes for the 1 minus 1 state. I'll do exactly the same game of making these unit vectors, the row vector and the associated column vector. And the output of the plus, minus 45 degree wave plate will create a 1 minus 1 state. And that, again, to emphasize, is the matrix element as a whole for the minus 45 degree polarizer. Now if we want to find out what the output of all of this is, what's the output state, we can go ahead and do the math. Now since I've written, since I've told you guys to write your polarizer elements as a row vector followed by a column vector, a row vector times a column vector, that's a simple inner product or dot product. And if you take the analysis here, you get EX plus EY over root 2. This is a scalar. This is a single number and it's the result of this dot, dot product. 1EX plus 1EY divided by root 2. So that's one number. We have another dot product here. 1 minus 1 times 1, 1. And that's going to be 1 minus 1 over 2 because there's two factors of root 2. And then there's going to be the output state and we don't have to do any math there. The last element, whenever you have a polarizer, the last element is always going to be 1 minus 1, just whatever that output state is of the polarizer, over root 2. So this is the output unit vector and the product of these two white terms is going to be how much of that unit vector we've got. Now you've probably noticed something already and wondering why I didn't just take advantage of it right away. And that is that this term here is just equal to 0, 1 minus 1 in the numerator. So this entire output state here is just equal to 0 amplitude, 0 amount of the output of the last polarizer. But the important thing is it's 0. There's no power here. And I want to emphasize something else to you, which is that since we knew that these were crossed polarizers, it shouldn't even matter what input state we send in. And that suggests that the kernel of why this was a 0 is the interplay of the two polarizers. And indeed it is. It's the interplay of this row vector from the minus 45 with this column vector from the plus 45. That's directly what gave us this 1 minus 1 equaling 0. So if you become savvy at doing problems like this, I'll even write it out. There's absolutely no need to do this multiplication here to get this term because this term is going to go to zero regardless of whatever else is happening in the system. So if you ever see two, term, two elements next to each other and you know what their combined effect is, multiply them together first. That might be two half wave plates multiplying together to give you a full wave plate, which is equal to the identity matrix, as we've seen in another tutorial. Or in this case, it's the two crossed polarizers 
give you zero and you don't have to do any other analysis because it doesn't matter what comes before them or after them. Now the next case that I want to consider is when you have a half wave plate placed between crossed polarizers. Now if you cross two polarizers, they will pass no light as we just saw, but a half wave plate is capable of taking one linear polarization and flipping it 90 degrees. That should allow all of the power to get from one polarizer to the other without any extra loss at that second polarizer. And let's, let's run the math on that. So again, we're going to have those crossed polarizers at plus and minus 45 degrees. So in this case, to set up the problem, I'm going to start with a state that's at plus 45 degrees. And it's got an amplitude E0. So that's basically the output of the first polarizer. The output of the plus 45 degree polarizer. That's where we'll start our problem. So I, you'll notice I'm not actually writing out a matrix element for that first polarizer. I'm, in this case, starting the problem here. Maybe I would certainly be doing that if I'd started out with randomly polarized light prior to it. Now, in, if I sent it directly through a crossed polarizer, a 1 minus 1 over root 2, 1 minus 1 over root 2, if I send it into a minus 45 degree polarizer, you'll notice that 1 minus 1 would multiply the 1, 1, and we would get 0 just in the previous problem. But now we're going to send in a half wave plate in the middle. And if this is oriented along the x and y axes of our coordinate system, then the matrix of this is going to be 1, 0, 0, minus 1. And we know conceptually already that that's going to flip that 45 degree polarized light and make the output minus 45 degrees. But because we're drilling on this, let's make sure that that all comes clear. When we analyze this, we're going to get E0. And then the, this matrix operating on this is going to give me a 1 minus 1 state over root 2. So no change in the amplitude but the unit vector has changed from 1, 1 over root 2 to 1 minus 1 over root 2. Now I can do the math of these next two here. 1 minus 1 times 1 minus 1. That's going to be a scalar. That's just a dot product. So when I do that product, the two factors of root 2 will give me a half. So I'm going to get E0 times 1 plus another 1. That's 1 plus 1 over the two factors of root 2. So that's just equal to E0. So the output amplitude that I get is E0. And the only thing left is that it multiplies by the unit vector of what's passed by the minus 45 degree polarizer. In this problem, there was a 2 by 2 matrix in the middle that you can't pull apart into a row and a column quite the same way. So you just march your way through it and you see the 1, 1 state becomes a 1 minus 1 state, and then all of it gets through the last polarizer. And so all of the input power at E0, all of the input field strength, comes out at the end as still being E0. Okay, let me clear this up now so we can consider two slightly more difficult cases. Case 3 is circularly polarized light circularly polarized light going through a, a polarizer. So we have some expectations here that since circularly polarized light has no preferred linear orientation and explores all of them equally, we would expect that half of its power gets through a linear polarizer. Let's see how that works. The input state in this case, it's as always, we can think about it as an initial electric field E0. And then the input unit vector in this case is going to be 1, and we'll stick with the y component trailing the x component, 1i over root 2. So if half of the power 
is going to get through the polarizer, we would expect that the field strength at the end is going to be E naught over root 2 because you square the electric field strength to get something proportional to the power. So let's see if we do get E naught over root 2 at the end. This is our circularly polarized state. We're now going to operate upon it with a polarizer. And in general, a polarizer at some angle theta is going to pass it's going to ask how much cos theta sine theta linear component there is and how however much there is of that the output state will be a column vector cos theta sine theta no root twos here cos theta sine theta is already normalized so this is the polarizer oriented at angle theta and this is the circular input Okay, what are we going to get out? Well, we know that the output is going to be a cos theta sine theta state. So the only thing that remains hanging in the balance is what's the amplitude of that state going to be? Well, there's going to be an E naught. There's going to be a 1 over root 2. And then we're going to get cos theta sine theta dot product with 1i. So that's going to be the number cos theta plus i sine theta. I'm writing it in brackets to emphasize this is not a row vector. This is just a number, cos theta plus i sine theta. And of course, cos theta plus i sine theta, we know that's equal to e to the i theta, a complex number with unit amplitude. And then the rest of the amplitude of this is e naught over root 2. So this is a complex number with a magnitude e naught over root 2 and some phase theta. So the final state is going to be e naught over root 2, e to the i theta, and then this unit vector, cos theta, sine theta. And so we indeed do see that the magnitude this is the magnitude of the output state. The field strength is E naught over root 2. If you square that, you get 1 half E naught squared as compared to a full amount of E naught squared on the way in. So you have half as much power on the way out as on the way in, quite independent of what the orientation of the polarizer is. That will, of course, affect what the output unit vector is, what the linear orientation of the final state is, and it will affect this global phase term but it will not affect the amount of power getting through the analyzer. To, one more example for us to study. Okay, the fourth case that we want to study here is the case of a variable delay wave plate. And a variable delay wave plate can impart a phase delay of e to the i phi to the y component, and phi is a tunable amount. So we want to consider what happens if I have a variable delay wave plate stuck between crossed polarizers at plus or minus 45 degrees. Let's consider that. So our input state is going to be a plus 45 degree state again. So that's going to be E naught 1, 1 over root 2. That's our input state. Now we've got this variable wave plate. So that's going to be a 1, 0, 0, e to the i phi. And then you've got the, four, the minus 45 degree output state. That output analyzer selects for 1 minus 1 states. And however much there is of it will be output as a 1 minus 1 unit vector. So to name all of this stuff again, this is the input. This is the variable wave plate, which could be accomplished with a voltage sensitive electro optic like a Puckles cell. 
and this is the minus 45 degree polarizer used in such a way that we would now call it an analyzer. This has the most interesting math of any problem that we've done so far. When we analyze what's coming out of the variable wave plate, there's no particular shortcut here because you have this two by two matrix in the middle. You don't have any place where you have a row vector and a column vector that directly act on each other. So we just march along here. We have E naught, and then the one one state becomes a one e to the i phi state. And I'll keep the root two down there. Now the one minus one acts on the one e to the i phi. We're taking a dot product. We're gonna get a single number out. Well, the constants here are e naught and two factors of root two. So that's gonna give us e naught over two. And then the product, the dot product of these two vectors is going to give us the quantity one minus e to the i phi phi. And that's all going to be multiplied by this blue unit vector here, which I'll just keep track of over here. Now we can notice something about this expression right away. I've made some notes over here, and you'll notice that if the phi corresponds to no wave delay at all, so this is just an identity matrix, then we have crossed polarization between the input 45 degree state and the output minus 45 degree state. We would expect for that condition an output of 0%. This quantity here should go to zero, and it does. One minus e to the i phi would be one minus one, so we could cancel out. If on the other hand, this is a half wave plate, as it would be if phi were equal to pi, then I would expect a maximal amount of throughput. I would expect all of the power from the input state to get through here because the 45 degrees of orientation of the linear state would be flipped by the wave plate to be minus 45 degrees. And then it would all get through the analyzer. And we do see that the large, the most negative that this quantity here, e to the i phi, can be is exactly when phi is pi. We would then have one minus negative one or two. And we would then have that the total amplitude of what we have here in yellow would be e naught times two divided by two. In other words, just e naught. So it seems like we're in good shape here, but what's the general expression going to be? Well, one way to do that is actually to analyze directly for the power. If we take this electric field strength here, and we look for the power, we know the power scales as electric field times electric field complex conjugate. That's being covered elsewhere in tutorials. Well, E naught and two are just numbers. For that, we just have, when we square it, we get E naught squared over four. And then one minus e to the i phi, well, those are complex numbers. So the e will give us a factor of one minus e to the i phi. And the e to the complex conjugate will give us a factor of one minus e to the negative i phi. And I can rewrite that. Terms in this product, I'm gonna have one times one. I'm gonna have e to the i phi times e to the minus i phi. That's one plus one. And then I have two negative terms, I have minus e to the i phi, and I also have a negative e to the i negative, negative i phi. I can simplify that just two more times and then we're done. Obviously one plus one is just two, and this quantity in the parentheses here is equal to two cosine of phi, so that's two plus two cos phi, and I can take the twos and the four, and I can write that as e naught squared times one plus cosine phi over two. And there are many different ways we could have gotten to this point, but by directly considering the power, we can indeed see that the input state had a power corresponding to e naught squared as its amplitude. Here we have e naught squared times a quantity whose largest possible value is one plus one over two, whose largest possible quantity is one, so we would get 100% throughput with a half wave plate, and whose smallest possible value is one plus negative one, zero, which would lead to 0% throughput with a full wave plate or a zero wave plate.